This is the Rainbow Aviation video channel, and I'm your host, Brian Carpenter. Welcome back to this video series on 3D printed vortex generators. In part one of this video series, we took the GT500 up to conduct a series of tough tests to establish a baseline of airflow patterns over the wing during stalls and other aircraft configurations. Using this baseline data, we can do a comparative analysis from the original configuration to how the airflow patterns evolve with the installation of different types of vortex generators as well as the placement and the orientation of these vortex generators. In this segment, part two, we will show a series of steps that we undertook to accommodate the installation of vortex generator version 1-150. Our numbering system for the vortex generators is really quite simple. The baseline design for the vortex generator is the first number. In our case, number one is our first design, which is relatively traditional vortex generator. All of the vortex generators are designed with a basic length of one inch, and the dash number is the percentage of size. So for example, 1-100 is design number one, 3D printed at 100% scale, and 1-150 is design number one printed at 150 percent scale and so on. We need to begin this whole discussion of vortex generator placement with a bit of a caveat. Our experience with vortex generators in the past has given us at least a baseline of some general principles to follow. Additionally there's been a significant amount of vortex generator research done by other aircraft manufacturers and much of that research has been published online for us to draw upon. Also keep in mind that this type of flight test work should be conducted only by a professional test pilot. All of that being said, we started the placement of the vortex generators on just the left wing only and on only the outboard section of the aileron. This isometric placement of vortex generators has some bit of risk of one wing stall performance being different than that of the other. Previous experience has shown us that the performance difference on these type of aircraft with and without vortex generators is mitigated, especially at angles of attack that are non-critical. One of the big advantages of placing vortex generators only on one wing is that you now have a very distinct correlation in performance between the with and the without vortex generator side of the aircraft. If one wing is stalling before the other, that's going to become fairly evident immediately. If the performance changes are negligible, so will be the changes in flight characteristics. So our first change that we made to the baseline configuration was to install version 1-150 vortex generators from the tip to the inboard section of the left aileron. We also placed the vortex generators with a linear distribution that started out at the tip at about 10% of the cord and the furthest inboard vortex generator placed approximately 14% of the cord. When we compared the baseline no vortex generator condition with this configuration we saw a slight improvement in the airflow attachment with the vortex generators versus without. So if we synchronize our videos with the baseline on the right and our newest configuration on the left we can bring the two configurations simultaneously to the same critical angle of attack configuration and then conduct a freeze frame so that we can analyze the changes that have taken place. So we'll slowly bring the angle of attack up until we reach critical angle of attack. And just as we get right to critical angle of attack and we get separation, bam, right there, now we've got something that we can compare with VGs and without VGs. So let's take a look at the wing in the uh, baseline configuration with no vortex generators on it at all and see what the airflow pattern is doing at the most critical angle of attack here. And you can see that we've got airflow separation. We've lost pretty much all of this including right up to about this position right here, right at the very tip. So we've lost pretty much all of that during this section right here. So let's now take a look at the uh, first version, the set of vortex generators that we placed onto the leading edge and see what the airflow pattern is doing here. You can see that the inboard section without the vortex generators looks very similar to the baseline, but even as we go out into this area, we've still lost separation right in here, 
But this is kind of interesting because now we have from here outboard, we've reattached the airflow with those vortex generators in there. And so that kind of gives us an idea that this one might be placed a little too far aft, or it may simply be that the degradation of airflow in here is impacting that far out. But at least by the time we get to right here, we've now reattached the airflow at this critical juncture right here. So the next version that we're going to do, we're going to place the entire row of vortex generators along here using uh, this or this placement distance from the leading edge as a reference. On this segment of the video here, we've done the modifications to the airplane. We left the, the configuration that we had last time where we've got these vortex generators on the, on the tip. We've left those intact, but we've simply added an entire row all the way along the leading edge at about the 10% cord distance uh, along the entire length of the um, leading edge there into the inboard section. And so if you remember on the previous one we had a little bit of separation that was going on right out in here. And as we start to pull the nose up on this, take a look and see what's going on. Now the inboard section over here, we know that um, a lot of that disruption is the engine, the big giant fuel caps that are sticking up on the inside. So we're going to kind of ignore that initially and look back what's going on here. So once again, we've still got this separation that's occurring right around in this area. And that was kind of interesting that um, we are now with these right here, we're now reattached, but the position of these, which are identical other than the cord position, these don't appear as though they're doing as good a job and we're still getting some separation in there. Now there could be some other condition where we've got a little gap seal problem right here between the aileron and the flap which can could be contributing to that. But I don't think that's all of it that's going on right there. And then we're starting to get a little bit of separation right in this area that's a little bit more than what we have either side of that. So that's also kind of interesting. So that's kind of our next uh, gen. And of course during the test flight there's no way for me to see what's going on up there. I can't get a look at this until after we uh, physically land the airplane and look at uh, what's going on with the video. So this is interesting. We've made some we've made some changes, um, and we'll go through. and On each one of these segments, we do a complete test with flaps and uh, all three um, 10, 20, and 30 degrees flaps, as well as doing bank angles and stuff like that. So. This looks like we've made some um, some improvements and we've still got some areas of disruption. So we're now going to go and we're going to look at the changes that we make on the next um, revision of the placement of these particular vortex generators. Okay, so here we have the next version that we're uh, working on. And on this one we did a little bit different. We, um, we left that that inboard row that looked like it was doing pretty good out in the center section in here. We left that row alone, but the area where we had the most trouble, right where that gap seal problem that we talked about was, um, we've removed them all from right there. And then we uh, moved a couple out at the tip. We moved those forward just a little bit to get those back working, but we moved them a little further than we should have. We shouldn't really have done that. Only one test change at a time is kind of the rule on how it works. But this was kind of an interesting dilemma because if we're talking about a significant change from before and after, what we noticed is that inboard section was hanging in there, but when this airflow section got disrupted in here, it pretty much affected the entire wing. And we were getting every one of these, you can see the left wing is dropping off fairly dramatic. And so we're actually getting a roll to the left. And now that may be partly because we're hanging in there and I'm carrying a little bit of extra rudder when that occurs, but this was pretty dramatic to show that um, that one little section of missing vortex generators all of a sudden made it worse than when we didn't have any of those in there at all. And of course we went through and did it in all the flap configurations as well. Um, but that was kind of an interesting try and I think we gained a lot of information about that. That definitely was doing something, and without those vortex generators in there, boy, we really got to um, disrupting that airflow even more throughout the entire 
wing section that we were working with. Okay, so here we go with the next version. On this one, we have placed the vortex generators in a very consistent pattern throughout the length of the wing. Uh, we didn't do the last three because we thought they were pretty close and we weren't having real issues out there. But this kind of gives us a more consistent, we've kind of worked back and forth with positioning. It looks like this is working pretty well. So we'll go ahead and we'll test and see how this is responding with each of these. Now you can see we're kind of we're kind of going all the way back elevator in there and we're kind of losing the angle of attack so we're not really breaking except what you will notice is that when we get close to critical angle of attack it's the right wing this time that is now breaking and this left wing with the vortex generators is hanging in there longer and not stalling completely so we're getting that right wing to drop off on each one of these tests that kind of is an indicator that these vortex generators are working better than the uh, blank wing with no vortex generators on the other side. And every one of the tests we did um, confirmed that that right side was breaking on the thing. So we think we're making some progress here. And you can see by the airflow patterns, much different than the um, basic original profile that we were looking at. So we've come to the end of this episode of 3D Printing Vortex Generators Part 2. In this video, we could see some of the different changes and how it affected the airflow over the wing. We have much more information about the 3D printed vortex generators in upcoming episodes, so stay tuned and remember, if you find these videos helpful or just enjoyable, remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm your host, Brian Carpenter, and until next time, happy flying!